Hello everyone, so unfortunately I'm back in bed with a new arachnoiditis relapse. It started last week, um, I think triggered by some long distance car journeys the end of last week and then really kind of went downhill after I managed to bang my knee really hard on a door frame which sent a jolt through my body and um, within a couple of days after that you know the symptoms got clearly worse um, I've spoken to my neurologist and waiting for an IV um, methylprednisolone for three days one gram a day so um, I am taking 40 milligrams of prednisolone so that's kind of keeping things slightly more stable, but I'm pretty much back in bed full time and it's tough. Hello everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you'll probably just see from that clip, I have just been through another arachnoiditis relapse. Now, different to previously, I haven't done a video diary as such, but I did take a couple of videos during the relapse but it was just too it's too hard it's too exhausting sometimes to even think about it and because i've done it before i didn't want to do it that way but i did just want to kind of update you all on what's been happening and some of my journey through that relapse and into recovery so this is why i'm making a video today in this video i specifically want to talk about arachnoiditis relapses and why in my in my situation and, and I need others to comment on this to say if it's the same. When I have an arachnoiditis relapse, my low pressure headaches, my CSF leak symptoms get really, really acute. Now I'm back in bed again, I can hardly be upright, the the kind of the, the brain sag sensation, the pulling in my head, um, all that gets so much worse as well as all the arachnoiditis symptoms. It's not just that it's all the arachnoiditis symptoms as well in my lumbar spine, the pulling in my lumbar spine, my legs, my feet, the pins and needles, my, my feet feeling strange and pins on them, not being able to walk. But it's just something I'm, I just ponder a lot as to why that happened so much for me. For the first five years of having this illness, when I did relapse and, and the start of my illness, like um, we just assumed it was just CSF leak symptoms. And that makes sense because they are classic CSF leak symptoms. But as time's gone on, and after five years, I was diagnosed with arachnoiditis, and we saw the effect the IV steroids had, what we have discovered is that obviously these relapses um, that make my CSF leak symptoms so much worse, are inflammation based because once I have the steroids and the IV steroids the um, low pressure symptoms get so much better and as my consultant neurologist would say well IV steroids aren't going to kind of seal or fix a leak so there's obviously something else going on with regard in the inflammation. To start off with I just want to show you a video that I made during um, the relapse kind of in the middle of the relapse to try and explain what some of these low pressure symptoms feel like and one of my own theories as to why it might be happening. So I'm in another relapse at the moment. Um, I'm on about day eight, I'd say, um, but probably about a few days into it getting particularly bad and um, I'm having to be lying down most of the time. Being upright's really tough, particularly towards the end of the day. I've just managed about 10 minutes to cut up some salad to help with dinner. And um, just wanna talk about one of the main symptoms. It's easier to talk about while it's happening. Like it literally, I've got so much pain in the back of my head, my neck and the bottom of my spine. And it literally, um, it's just like severe, low pressure sensation but it's it's more than that because it's um so much at the bottom of my spine as well as my top my neck is so stiff it feels like my skull is being dragged into my neck and then the the similar at the bottom like my sacrum is being pulled up into my um spine it's just so much pain in my head and my neck and it's just so hard to tolerate. The pain then um, in my lumbar spine is just going straight into my legs and my feet. 
and it just makes walking really well it's so hard to walk anyway because my legs are so stiff um what are something i've wondered over time is whether the inflammation is actually kind of pulling at my spinal cord you know like um if it's becoming more inflamed and maybe that's stopping you know creating that sensation and the low pressure and stopping the flow I, I really don't know exactly what causes it but it's just horrendous and i'm on oral steroids 40 milligrams but it's not working so we're going for the iv and um hopefully i should get that in the next couple of days so but it's really, really tough. The oral prednisone is meaning it's not as bad as it can be, thankfully, but it's still horrendous. So just hoping this improves soon. Another thing that's really bad is my walking and my feet. My feet are just so uncomfortable and painful. And my legs, and my legs are just don't work properly when I'm in a relapse. I go from like being able to walk an average or more than 10,000 steps a day to I can only walk around the house and briefly around the garden. Um, but it just gets worse the longer I'm upright or try and move around. It's just, it's not good. Now, just to kind of give the background of what happened with this relapse, um, I would say it started off after I did um, a few days of traveling. Now we'd gone to see various different family um, relatives and I'd done at least two two hour journeys in the car and one three hour journey in the car. And after that time, we traveled back um, quite late on a Friday from, from Bristol. I would say from the Saturday and the Sunday, I just wasn't feeling quite right. And often that's how it works for me that I just feel more tired. My, even in my language, I'm, I'm struggling to cope more. So I'll be saying to Matt, I'm just so tired. I just, I just, things are just feeling really hard. I just, I just need some time out. I just, you know, just everything I do, the walking I normally do, the 10,000 steps, and I was still doing it at that point, but it was just so exhausting. And I was a bit bothered then that, um, that I could be relapsing. So on the days of the journeys and then um, the Sunday as well, so it was the Friday and the Sunday, I took 10 milligrams of prednisone, which I often do on journeys just to cover me. And afterwards, if I'm normally 10 milligrams, you know, if I'm feeling a bit off, can kind of help bring me back. But by the Monday, um, I was still feeling very tired and things like that. And I think possibly how I was feeling it didn't help the fact that I managed to completely kind of abash my knee and walk into a door frame and I, I can't remember the last time I hit myself that badly I ended up with a really big bruise on my knee and you know if you hit a bone really hard you end up jumping about and you know and the minute that I hit it it was like this jolt went through my body now in the moment whenever that happens to me I get like this surge of pressure and it makes me feel really awful for a bit um, so I knew that that would happen, um, but because of how vulnerable I was feeling, I was a bit bothered. I was more than a bit bothered. I was really concerned that it might cause a full blown relapse. So that's the point I started increasing my prednisone. I took 20 milligrams that day. Now, thankfully I had access to a course of 10 day 40 milligram, which um, my neurologist had um, said that the GP could prescribe if I started in a relapse. And the reason that I already had that is because in July, we'd gone on a holiday to France. And um, I wanted to take some stories with me in case the travel into France caused a relapse. Um, thankfully it didn't in France. Um, I did well for me in France. The traveling was really hard. The flight was really, really tough, particularly the traveling on the way back. I was very, very ill. The pressure changes and everything made me very sick, but I managed it and I didn't relapse at that point. But thankfully I had those. So from that Monday, I took the 20 milligrams. From the Tuesday, I would say I was experiencing what I always experience before I get a relapse. I will get these waves of really strong symptoms, you know, where I, my head is just, you know, I, I'm used to, as I say before, feeling drunk, but feeling so drunk and out of it. 
and just struggling to concentrate and speak. And um, as I walk, you know, I just get a bit kind of need to hold on to things and get a bit dizzy. Now that was kind of coming and going. So, you know, from the Tuesday, I was like, right, I've just got to go on to the 40 milligrams and we've got to see if we can get this. Now the Tuesday, Wednesday, we were hoping that, you know, it was kind of coming and going a bit, but we were hoping that the 40 milligrams would get on top of it. But by Thursday, um, I kind of was doing things around the house. I was just feeling so tired. Everything was a bit spacey. I went for a walk. And at that point I knew because the key thing that happens for me on the journey is my legs start going. And there's no, unless you've experienced it, it's really hard to explain, but it's literally my legs just stop working properly. And I go from one day being able to walk like over 10,000 steps a day and my legs being pretty strong to be able to do that, to just be like walking and like, I've just got to get home because my legs are giving way. I've just got to get home. And I, I tried to do some things. I tried to pop to the shops and everything was just getting too spacey. And at that point I was like, right, I, I know that I'm relapsing now. I can't drive, I can't go out. I can't, you know, if I go for a walk, I need to be with my husband, like, because, you know, I'm just not stable and things like that. Thankfully, that day I happened to have a follow-up call with my neurologist, which I hadn't had for a year and actually had got cancelled um, from July due to the junior doctor strikes. So I explained to him what was happening and he just um, said, I, I think just we need to go straight to the IV if the 40 milligrams isn't working. Let's go for the IV because it's going to take a while to organise. Um, my neurologist is in um, another part of the Midlands and um, my local hospital is the one that treats me with IV. So the next day I called um, the neurologist secretary in um, my local hospital and although my consultant was on leave, um, she emailed her so that the process could begin um, on the, the next week. So from that Thursday, the relapse really took hold. I'm thankful to say that because of the 40 milligrams, it didn't get as completely unbearable as it can. I mean, it was unbearable. Like, it was awful. Like, you know, I, I could manage about an hour upright in the morning before my legs and head would give way. I could only walk in around the garden and holding on to things. I would try and get a few things done. After that, I could sometimes at a push do 20 minutes up. Um, I tried the first couple of days, I could go for a little walk with my husband if he was there holding me, but my legs would give way. After that, I couldn't, couldn't go out from the house. Um, the longer I was upright, the, the harder it became, the more my legs would go, the more the pain would be, as I've just explained, in the back of my head and in my um, neck and in my lumbar spine and into my feet. And, um, and I just couldn't function after a while of being upright. So from that weekend, I was mainly in bed again. Um, by the Monday, um, you know, it, it just took a little while to organise um, the IV, but it was decided to set the IV at the end of the 10 days I'd kind of done on the around 40 milligrams. Um, so the IV was planned on the GPAU unit at my hospital um, after doing blood tests and things like that on the Thursday. And I am thankful to say that, again, the IV has had the effect it has. And I'm doing a lot better. It's kind of brought me around. I'm able to be upright again. And um, I'm doing a lot better, thankfully. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm straight back. It normally takes me about one to two weeks after the relapse, as long as it's treated quite quickly, um, to get back to more my baseline symptoms. I'm, I'm getting there. But I will say one of the things that a lot, I've heard various people report, and I don't know what scientific proof there is of this. People can report that these steroids can increase their pressure. So you kind of go from low pressure to high pressure. Now, I, I, my pressure is so hypersensitive and messed up and mixed up. Like, I, I think there's such a sh small thing between my experience of kind of high low pressure. It's just I have 
pressure sensitive head, you know, like it's so sensitive to pressure. Now, often people with arachnoiditis can have higher pressure issues, but if you have a leak, you can have lower pressure issues. It's very confusing. Um, and as I say, it's, um, it's a bit confusing as to why I, I get such clear low pressure symptoms um, when I am in a relapse. Is it due to more CSF leak seepage? Is it due to what I said about um, my, my spinal cord being pulled and creating kind of more of that brain stag sensation and stop and flow? Um, is it that I leak more? I don't know. But following the steroids, um, I, I, I still had, I had a very clear pressure headache and, and that's been a bit worse than normal. Um, but it wasn't post postural, um, it felt more high pressure. It's very reactive to any strain in um, kind of coughing, doing too much. I'm finding going for walks. I have been, my legs are strong enough to go for walks, but if I go for a walk, I get very, very spaced out. And yesterday I went for a walk and um, I bumped into someone I knew and I was just like, I've just got to hold on to this tree while I talk to you because talking in particular um, just increases my pressure and makes it worse and while I'm walking. So things are a lot better and I'm definitely on the road to recovery, but they're not by any means back at my baseline yet. And um, there's a lot of kind of settling in my head and my body that needs to happen. I'm on a about a two week steroid taper. Um, I started tapering from 30, I'm down to 20 now. Um, milligrams of prednisone and I've probably cut that down around five milligrams a day, depending on how well I can do that to try and come off the steroids within that kind of normal three, four week period since I started um, to try and protect the adrenal gland. But it's been really hard, like, so, so far we're kind of three weeks since kind of it started. I would say there's another week, you know, it's normally about a month, I think, before I begin to kind of like feel a bit more my normal, my normal, which is not normal, <laughs> my normal baseline symptoms, which I've made videos about before. So I just wanted to have a chat with you about how, what's happened, the relapse had happened, Prior to this, I've gone over a year without relapsing, which is really good and also encourages me because there are risks with using the steroids and the IV steroids, but, um, but I've had quite a stable year. But it just goes to show you just never quite know what the trigger's gonna be and what might cause kind of a relapse. But I am so very grateful for my doctors and the treatment plan I have in place. It's not simple. It takes a bit of kind of organization and speaking to different people and chasing things up and things take a little while. It's, it's, it's never simple, but having a plan in place really does help. And I really do appreciate that. And um, both my neurologist and the hospital support that I get but I will keep you updated in how things progress. I know I don't make as many videos anymore. It's simply, I don't have the time or the energy to kind of keep updating and also don't always want to repeat myself, but I will um, make another video in maybe a few months time and tell you how things have gone. But please do, I really would like to hear people's comments about those that have experienced arachnoiditis or they have kind of um, more frequent real relapses in CSF leak symptoms or low pressure symptoms and, and they're beginning to wonder if that could be inflammation based. Um, do you um, experience some of the things? Can you relate to what I'm talking about? Have you found that anti-inflammatories or steroids or, or whatever it is um, do improve those symptoms? In which case, you know, I, I, I really do think it's it's an area that I wish that they would look into and that people would study because I do think that maybe this could help other people. <laughs>